Coming up, we find out whose 2021 predictions were on the money and whose fell flat. It's our predictions results show. This is the Daily Tech News Show for Thursday, December 30th, 2021 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Redwood, I'm Sarah Lane. From Salt Lake City, I'm Scott Johnson. From somewhere in St. Louis, I'm Patrick Norton. <laughs> from Columbus, Ohio, I'm Rob Dunwood. From Los Angeles, I'm Lamar Wilson. And I'm Roger Shank, the show's producer. Welcome to our end of 2021 predictions results episode where we look at those predictions we made last year about technology and say, huh, I was so right. Well, maybe one of us will say that. Most of us probably won't. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Uh, before we get into the the results, uh, everybody feeling good about the new year? Yeah? Huh? I mean, mm. it, just, it, it snuck could, up on us so could quick. Could be worse. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. some of the stuff, some of those things we all thought were 2020 things, maybe those will be 2022 things, you know? Like all the hot new yeah. innovations. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, because the, the running joke of people don't remember for years before 2020 was that everybody said, ah, that will be a development in 2020. And then we did get a development in 2020. It's just not the one everyone was predicting they would get. Very different. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, maybe maybe 2022. All right, let's look at how we did at the end of last year. Uh, starting with you, Sarah Lane, your first mm -hmm. prediction for this past year was that Oculus Quest 2 would get an app that would make it a must-have in homes as the pandemic continued through 2021? Well, okay. So, <laughs> so the, so the quest two specifically, I, I, it was new. So I think I was just throwing that in there The the quest as a platform in general is going to, things are going to get a lot different over the next, let's say year. Right. Um, because the quest has been up until this point, sort of the consumer product and I am very, very bullish on it, but I'm very bullish on certain things. What would make it a must have in homes is not the apps that I'm using. Yeah. I use exercise apps. I love them. People who also use them, love them. You know, we're all in Facebook groups together and, and it's great, but I don't think, I don't think there was some like everyday breakout. This is the new no. messenger kind of thing. That's that's where this falls down. The pandemic continued. You got that part right. The Quest yeah. kind of generally did do well because of people staying at home more. It's not called Oculus anymore, though. So they're gonna they're gonna get rid of that. But that's not until next year. So I don't think you, I don't think you have to worry about that. But yeah, there's just not that one app that everybody can point to, is there? I don't think so. No, I mean, and I. I, I feel like I'm the outlier in many cases where people go like, oh, VR has, that. I'm not doing that. Like how fun it could it be? And I'm like, it's so fun. But uh, no, I, I think it's, I think I would, I would call this still a fringe industry. Um, mm. And I hope that it, it becomes something that's a little bit more mainstream in the future, but 2021 wasn't it. Wrong. Quest. All right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Your second prediction, glimmers of a post Facebook oh, and Twitter world will emerge from a company that isn't Ello or Parler, but something new and different. And that was 100% wrong. Wrong! But Meta. Yeah, Meta, sure. I mean, Facebook changed its name. Okay. I mean, Didn't change the I name get, of Facebook though. Just I get the parent company. So slight pass. I, I kind of I don't know. I'm so the reason that I made this prediction a year ago was because people were sick of Facebook, uh, frustrated with Twitter. There were so many so many um <sighs> so many things that consumers wanted that neither company could deliver on. I would argue that both companies uh, took very different stances to that. Um, Twitter, very recently, um, going through a big change, got a new CEO, uh, will, you know, kind of remains to be seen how that will change. But I did feel like that the sentiment was so negative that there would be an alternate social network that rose up somewhere. And yeah, you mentioned Ello, you mentioned Parlor Tom. Uh, I mean, you the, well, yeah, I did. I mean, as yeah. examples of like, well, we've tried this before, but never gained a lot of traction. Eh, there wasn't anything else. Either. I personally, I just want to say, I personally shared your 
uh, wishful, if we want to call it wishful thinking, because I really had hoped maybe something would disrupt that market as well and do it in a really meaningful, powerful way. And nothing, nothing did. But I, I was, I remember when you made this prediction, I was like, I really hope she's right. Cause I would love that. That'd be great. Closest so thing to it was TikTok, right? I was going to say, so not TikTok. Yeah. yeah I was going to say, but no, it's video. So, and also yeah. it wasn't, it wasn't like it was new back, back a year ago. Right. Yeah. Right. We, Right. It just it just I mean, kept kept going. That's gained gained traction for sure, yeah, lot, but yeah. it already existed. And they mm. added a lot of stuff to make it more social media ish, like you know how you reply and get friends and suggest friends and that sort of stuff. So they've they've made attempts in that way, but it's not really what I think we were looking for. Um, although I really like TikTok, so maybe it did. Maybe I got it and I didn't notice it. I don't know. <laughs> and your third prediction, Bitcoin gets back into the mix, never went away, but price fell long enough that people stopped believing. I think I get a point on this one. All right. What, however That's you funny. feel about cryptocurrency, um, there I, was I a time, yeah, there was a time at the end of about a year ago that it was kind of like, oh, was this just a bunch of vaporware? You know, like no one's going to make any money off of this. And now Bitcoin is you know, launching, um, what, what did they just do in Miami? It was like the Bitcoin conference kind of thing. Like Bitcoin is, Bitcoin's back. And I also use Bitcoin as just a term for crypto in general, and it's very volatile. Um, I kind of, I, I dipped, I dipped my, uh, my toes into the crypto world, uh, <laughs> when I was laid up uh, a couple months ago with devastatingly bad results for me. Um, because Sorry. it's just, yeah, it's just stupid. Good thing I didn't have enough money to, to actually lose to in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but no, I, I think, I think, I think we're, I think we're back up. I think there was a point where it was at least, I don't know, in my social yeah. circles of people who care about this sort of thing, it was kind of like, eh, yeah, Bitcoin, that, that's not really going to go anywhere. And, and it seems to be roaring back. What do y'all think? A coin. I, I, think I agree with her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She nailed it. That was definitely that one. You, you nailed that one. That was definitely up. Um, it was it was around the the March April time frame when Elon Musk started talking about what was it Dogecoin? Mm -hmm. Then yeah. crypto just became a thing again, and and uh, and Bitcoin is definitely one of the, the the primary beneficiaries of just it being in the mouth of everyone for the last nine months, eight months. Yeah. In fact, it's so much back into the mix now that I looked at this and was like, what do you mean get back into the mix? Like, oh, right. In December of last year, Bitcoin was down and it had crashed. And people were like, well, maybe other cryptocurrencies might. Like, it was it, it was kind of crazy how much it turned around in a year. Right. So, yeah, I think you nailed this one. Good job. Well, thank you. I'm one for three. I feel really good about that. All right. <laughs> hey, you know what? You could win a, a, a National League batting championship. With 333. Exactly. So, yeah, not bad. Uh, Scott Johnson, we move on to you. Uh, you said Netflix will lose a massive share of streaming audience to Disney Plus, Hulu, and HBO Max by the end of 2021, forcing a price drop or at least no price rise. Yeah, I got that wrong. Um, wrong! I think, I think I got it wrong, though, in a nuanced way. Like, f for sure, the streaming market itself, I think, expanded, or at the very least, people that were happy having Netflix were also happy to add something like HBO Max or Disney Plus to their to their what you know services they pay for every month and while no prices were dropped and it didn't really put the kind of pressure on them that i thought i think that netflix is doing great um it's kind of the opposite of of the core of my prediction um i am happy to see that space being you know padded out with more options more competition more content that i'm interested in so overall, I mean, I, I, I don't know if we blame some of this on the pandemic or where this comes from for me in my head, but I think the current state of streaming is kind of awesome. And so much of it is, I mean, we are creeping closer to that thing Tom always talks about where we're going to have so many, it'll be like cable again. Uh, or or I guess people send that into the show all the time. It's not necessarily your take, but I hear it all the time. And maybe we're headed there. But right now it feels good and it feels like I can get a lot of choice for not that much money and I'm really happy with it. So I'll take the loss, but I'm happy with where it is. Yeah, I think you you were not alone among people who sort of forgot it's not a zero-sum game, right? Yeah. Disney did expand its audience. You were right about that. Absolutely. It just wasn't at Netflix's yeah. expense. 
Yeah. yeah. I, I think one of the reasons we were we were thinking is I remember when you made that prediction. What we're thinking is is because everybody was taking back their content. And and it's and it, so now what does Netflix have that is original and are the audiences really interested in original content? And mm-hmm. and uh, we we've learned from you know from the Squid Games to yeah. uh, the, the 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 recent anim- anime uh, thing that just came out on Netflix that was that was great. That yeah, people will will flock to original content, and if it gets if it gets popular, it gets very popular. Yeah, Netflix yeah. is maybe leading that charge still. And Lamar makes a really good point. Like we were at a point where we were like. Oh man, Netflix is losing all their movies. They're losing all this Peacock stuff. They're losing all the NBC stuff. They're losing all these things. Warner Brothers, yeah. and so it looked bad. So I feel okay about the basis where but I was. That, that I mean, been also the a year call about Netflix over the years. Oh, they're losing stars. They'll never survive. They always yeah. figure out yeah. a way. Yeah. You know, it was also what not even a year ago that The Mandalorian was a huge, yeah. huge Disney Plus yeah. hit, and mm-hmm. I thought the same thing. Like, hmm, I wonder. You know, they all can't survive, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Is Netflix going to take a hit for this? Didn't end up happening this year, but it doesn't mean it won't. Yeah. Of course, uh, Scott's next prediction was uh, after their their price drop, they will release a show about squids that will make them recover everything. <laughs> Is that not right? What it was? I your mean, next? I feel oh, like yeah. I was prophetic there, but I don't want to take too much credit. I, yeah. I may have had an inside <laughs> job. What was your actual next? Pre- uh, my next prediction was that Nintendo was going to release a full generational sequel to the Switch, a Switch Two, a proper Switch Two, uh, with a couple of big Nintendo titles. It would be a monster hit. It would be on the on the tales of what they've already done and succeeded with. The Switch came out in 2017, and while this isn't necessarily the full generational um, timeline that we usually have with a new Nintendo product, I thought maybe it was time, and that thing was showing its its age. Uh, what we got instead was an OLED model of the thing, and it's nice, and it's got a few other improvements here and there. They seem to have fixed their dr- controller drift problem, um, and they've had some big hits this year. They're doing fine. Nintendo's doing great. Um, but it wasn't quite the generational jump I'd hoped it would be. And now I'm in the mood for saying this, will, that'll be something we'll see in the next year or two. Cause I really do think it's time, but that OLED, that OLED device is pretty nice. And that'll, that'll get them by for another three. If you hadn't said full generational, if I know. You, you know, if you'd fudged it, a little, <laughs> just, I know, I mean, I, there's always good. this desire to have Nintendo play in the old playground they used to play in, which is with the other big boys and everybody's trying to compete for heart or for speed and power and everything else. And they just, they don't do that anymore. It's not their yeah. thing. They play on IP and good enough hardware and unique uses of that hardware and it's working for them. So I shouldn't be surprised that they haven't rushed that through. Nintendo doesn't rush anything. Their, their internet stuff's still bad. Like they've got a lot of stuff to work out and get through, but I'm hopeful that whatever the follow-up to the Switch is is not like the Wii U or, in some respects, the GameCube. As much as I love that device, you know, where they where they have a real dip. I think they've learned some lessons and they'll stay, you know, they'll stay extremely relevant no matter what they do next. What would you say the uh, the the monster hit would be? Because I can't think of one for. Um, well, for me, it would have been kind of what they did last time and say, hey, you know how we told you we were making a Breath of the Wild sequel for the Switch? Like, there'll still be a a scaled-down version of that there, but instead, that full-blown sequel is going to be on this new one, like we did with Twilight Princess and the GameCube Ah. and and the Wii and like we did with uh, with Breath of the Wild for the Wii U, uh, moving it to the Switch. Those were were all intended for the previous platforms and Mm -hmm. technically released on them. I thought maybe that would be the way to do it. That game is just a system seller automatically, and um, I, I was certain we were heading that way, but now we we actually didn't do that or get much information on that new game. So who knows yeah. what the heck they're doing? Well, we did get Metroid, right? So that gets, we did. You know, yeah, it's yeah. pretty good. Can't yeah. be too sad. Yeah. All right, last prediction, Scott. Game Pass will take Microsoft to the top spot of this console generation in units sold, uh, profitability overall. Sony will spend a year trying to match uh, value add features. I think I get a yes on this one, and here's why: yeah. we have numbers from just. Uh, Last month or last quarter, whatever it is, the uh, specifically the S model of the new generation of consoles, not the X, but the S, which has been more available, is now has now taken the top sales spot over PlayStation 5 and over the Switch for it the is? first time in I'm this generation. I'm looking at the MPD group stuff, and it says the Switch is still in front, but is that, well, a combi- is that because they combine Switch OLED and... and... Right, Probably but the also, they also combine that with the 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 light so i'm guessing those are part of those numbers as well yeah okay um but but as far as like just single console sales that got them there and i'm not sure 
I'm not 100% sure this is the reason why, but I have to think a big part of it is the success of Game Pass and just the ridiculous value of Game Pass. Um, that thing is almost a joke. It's so good. I don't know how they're getting away with it. Well, it's Microsoft. They're, you know, they're lost leadering this thing to death. And that's good for us as consumers. I don't know how it is for them long term. But combine that with what they're doing in the last couple of weeks with Halo numbers and how things went with Forza. They're having a really good couple of months. And yeah. my Series X has never been happier. So uh, I think that they 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 did it maybe not in a way that where everyone's like, oh, clear in a way they're running away from everybody. Maybe not that. But they've gotten the to a place where they're dominant in some ways, certainly in services. And they've got Sony on the run trying to figure out what to do to match it. And I think they had to do that. Sony did. And now we're in a place where I can give that a tentative why, Tom, in the little column there, a little why there. What do y'all think? Uh, by the numbers, PlayStation 5 still 13.4 million to Xbox Series X and S, 8 million. But Xbox did pass PlayStation 5 in U.S. sales on the MPD group this past year. Game Pass, definitely successful. Are we and giving Sony, them credit? And Sony's trying to match features. There's a rumor of the, yeah. the, you know, yeah. the Game Pass thing with them. So Yeah, yeah I get that. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. I think that's a plus. Feels yeah, all right. Yeah. All right. We're, good. We're, good. We're giving you a why. All right, one me and Sarah, two, two down, one good on Sarah and I. Sarah, so neck and neck. All yes. right, Patrick Norton, let's move to you. Uh, you said at least one of Lenovo, HP, or Dell, the top three PC uh, makers by market share, will work with Microsoft to follow Apple's lead and start making custom ARM CPUs. I feel comfortable in calling this mostly 90% of fail. Uh, it's <laughs> funny. Like, I think like four days after we recorded this, there were a bunch of reports that uh, Microsoft was designing chips for its servers, ARM-based chips for servers, and that may trickle into the Surface PCs. That was the tail end of 2020. Uh, since then, there's been some like, some rumors that Microsoft's working with AMD to do a custom Surface ARM CPU. There's been some noise around um, some possible Microsoft ARM development, but nothing I would I would say calls this a win. I also would like to call myself an idiot for saying Lenovo, HP, or Dell instead of saying Microsoft because the operating system is really yeah. critical to make work with the chip integration, especially after seeing the release of the, the M1 Max and the M1 Pro, um, where a friend of mine got an M1 Max, and it was completely life-changing because he worked with massive data sets, and the fact that Apple basically bombed out a... a uh, a server processor that has this ridiculous amount of bandwidth running from the memory to the chip has just made huge differences in his ability to process data. Um, yeah, I, I feel like Apple's far and away and ahead. I have a, a friend who, who, to put this into context, he runs a hardware review website. He, he has all of the fastest hardware. And I, I think it was, he said, uh, he, he, touched DaVinci Resolve on his wife's MacBook Pro, not the Macs or the Pro, but just her original MacBook. Um, and it basically just wanted to burst into tears because it's so <laughs> much faster than the desktop he normally, he personally runs DaVinci Resolve on. So I think yeah. the idea is solid, but it's nowhere near fruition at this point. So it's I'm, what you're saying is, what you meant to say was in 2022, <laughs> Microsoft, <laughs> 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 What's well, funny, I, I remember this prediction, and I remember at the time hoping you were right. Uh, didn't have an M1 yet and was thinking it was eyeballing one, ended up with the mini, and I can confirm like everything's better, faster, better for yeah. me. On a Mac platform, if that's where you already were out there and you're all wondering, oh, is it worth it or whatever? I'm running Intel based stuff faster than it ran before the M1 chip, and it's running through, you know, Rosetta 2. Um, I have some stuff that's running through two layers of, uh, of compatibility or, or translation and it's still mm -hmm. faster than it was yeah. on the raw intel version of this thing from the previous year so i'm while i'm not as knowledgeable about all the under the hood as you are as as someone who needs a you know a certain kind of workflow and i have certain kind of expectations blew my mind i am loving that thing and i'm i'm all in as long as they don't screw it up all right patrick's next prediction was that by some minor miracle, Starlink actually will manage to blanket most of the U.S. with $99 a month unlimited internet, causing radical changes in data pricing by Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile. Mm. <laughs> I mean, I wanted it. I so I wanted, wanted you to be right on this one. We all cheered for you. I to so be right. wanted you to be right. It could have even been 129. I still gave it to you. So. Yeah. 
there's a couple really cool maps and they actually show all of the you basically they're maps of of of, of the the starlink satellites in space they have coverage they yeah. just don't have enough coverage um I, I i spent a bunch of time on the starlink website yesterday and i was typing in you know remote places i've been i started with st louis and started working my way out and i finally found like Gerlach, North Nevada is a place that doesn't have the, the, the basically they're hexagonal cells of coverage. So I found like a, after about 15 places I've traveled to or lived, I found one hexagonal cell that isn't saturated at this point. So if anybody wants to move to Gerlach, which has very inexpensive rent <laughs> <laughs> and it's just a easy 90 minute to two hour drive from a supermarket, um, that is a place where you can currently get Starlink. Everywhere else, it's mid twenty twenty two before availability. Mm. So, uh, the other thing that came out is 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 it's really if you can't put it on your roof, uh, if you have trees or hills or tall buildings around you, um, coverage is is pretty brutal. But there's some interesting speculation that the, you know how wide uh, uh, an area or how sort of wide a field of view you need of space to make it work will reduce as they pack as they as they launch more satellites but um you know this was a, a dream and definitely has not happened but I, I will also say i've been surprised it, as it works as well as it does in the field so for a what, lot of what you were meant to say was by the end of 2022 <laughs> 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 All right, third prediction for Patrick, 3000 series Nvidia GPUs and AMD's 5000 series CPUs won't be easy to buy at MSRP until June. Hopefully June of what too. year? <laughs> <laughs> you could have just stopped at MSRP. You would have nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> Say it, Tom. Say it, Tom. <laughs> I'm going to give you half credit. I think we should give him half credit. Yeah, I do too. That's oh, fair. I mean, it's yeah. it's very true. It just happened to be longer than that. Yeah, yeah. still true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, still very true. True I, and I, still true. I was true. reading this when we when we first put this together. I'm like, oh, Patrick got oh June. <laughs> 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 yeah, I think we give you half credit on that, uh, which uh, which puts your batting average at 187. But still, you know, that's <laughs> not bad. Not bad. You're in the hunt. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Let's move on to Rob Dunwood. Uh, your first prediction was that you thought boutique and gig consulting would skyrocket in 2021. Yeah, so I'm, I'm not sure if I'm right on this one um, or not, because my thought process led me to believe that, well, with the beginning of the pandemic, so many people are laid off. They're learning other skills, and then they'll they'll get a gig job to employ that skill so that they can actually go get a real job. Where I think I'm wrong is that, no, they actually went and got jobs. You know, you, you, you have seen <laughs> significant numbers of people who have completely changed careers because they took, you know, free training or they may have paid for some training and they took enough online tests that companies were actually willing to, I'm just going to, you know, you did so well on this test. I'm going to hire you in. I don't need you to be a contractor. I want you to come work here because companies need people so badly. Uh, right now and, and pretty much all this year, uh, you know, numbers for for hiring are just, you know, ridiculous right now. So, like I said, I, I don't know that I can call that, you know, a, you know, I don't know if you can give me a full point for it because I thought it was going to really be consulting that was going to be the thing. Mm. And it's like, no, these people that I thought were going to go into consulting, they actually went into full time positions. I hear it all the time. I've got friends and family members who have actually, you know, I was driving a bus. Now I am a PeopleSoft developer, um, you know, after, you know, taking six months of courses. And I just hear story after story after story of that. So um, wrong because they actually did better than I thought they were going to do. Yeah. I, I, I think if you hadn't said consulting specifically, because uh, there was just a recent article, I was trying to find it, it was on Forbes or whatever, that uh, although I, do, I definitely agree with, with you and your experience and your numbers, there, there were a, a surprising amount of people who decided to find a way to work for themselves, too. You know, and, and those mm. those numbers are not exact because you have to wait mm. to tax time to really find out right. who those who those people are. But but there yeah, there are a number of people, even if they jumped into like a DoorDash or something like they just decided I want to be my own person, maybe contractor uh, would have would have definitely kind of edged you over to the, to that full point. Uh, but, but consulting is a fair one. I, I would, when you, when you said that, I agree with you. I thought people would be more, you know, Hey, I have this skill. 
and mm-hmm. I want to share this with other. I want to train other people on how to do this. And so, I, I yeah, it's it's an interesting one. It's a tough point to give you. So how how much do we give him? I say half. Yeah. I give just, you a half. The, yeah. The, consult, the consulting word is the only is the only gray All area. Right. I can I can just say from personal experience, I've heard from people who were like, oh, guess what I'm doing? I'm doing this stuff part time. A lot of my artist friends are doing logos for sites that that's all they do is they produce content that then then sell to people uh, as, you know, gig stuff. So that has been an uptick. Now, I don't have a way to measure that or anything else. But I remember when you said this prediction, I went, I think he's probably 100 percent right. And just, you know, anecdotally, people have said, yeah, I'm doing that now. And I feel like there's more of that going on. So I think that's fair. All right, have credit for that, Rob. Uh, that, your man. next one was 2021 will be the year of copycat clubhouse social network startups. Ding, ding, ding. Now, I think I <laughs> nailed this one. So yeah. <laughs> just off the top of my head, you've got Twitter spaces, Facebook rooms, Discord stage channels, Slack huddles, Telegram voice chats, LinkedIn. I don't know what theirs is called. Spotify recently purchased Betty Labs where they're going to start doing this stuff. And there are many, many others. Um the party line is popping right now. Um, Clubhouse is absolutely on to something. Unfortunately for them, I think the leader in the space is probably going to be Twitter because Twitter is killing it. They just recently uh, did, uh, I think it was during Jimmy V Week on ESPN, where they actually ran Jimmy V Week in a Twitter, uh, you know, in a Twitter space where you could actually donate and those kind of things right from the Twitter platform. And you're going to see all kind of things even moving into 2022 where these platforms are going to get bigger and bigger than what they are. But I think on this one, because there are so many copycats of Clubhouse um, and the big players, I mean, Facebook is doing it. Um, you know, Microsoft is doing it with LinkedIn. I think I get a point on that one. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Actually. Oh, clearly. I don't think anybody's yeah. going to dispute. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, I looked at this and I was like, he didn't say Clubhouse would be successful. He said there's going <laughs> to be a lot of copycats. And yeah, and that is 100% correct. If anything, to the expense of Clubhouse, you were saying. Right. I haven't heard right. of Clubhouse since since Twitter Spaces. I have not heard one uh, person. T- Twitter is killing it in this space right now. I feel yeah. sorry for Clubhouse because they were first, but man, um, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to catch up to a company that literally can count their user base in the hundreds of millions where they've released this to. Um, reminds me of uh, reminds me of Meerkat in some of some ways like that kind of come out of nowhere. Oh, my gosh, look at this, this startup. And then Twitter comes in and says, yeah, we're doing Periscope. And then no one heard of Meerkat again. Right. And I don't think Periscope's that big a deal anymore. But same idea. Twitter comes in. Let's do spaces. I just wish it was smarter about who I am, because when I go to spaces, it's a nightmare in there. I don't want to go to any of those rooms I see, but I'm, I'm with you. I think this is like a hot new thing. Obviously it is. The big players are doing it. All right. And your third one, can you get at least half on all three? Your third one was mobile payments finally become mainstream in the United States. Ooh. Uh, um, this, is, this one's going to go so, to the judges. Cause so here's what I will say. I personally no longer feel uncomfortable pulling out my phone and trying it more than one time to make it work mm-hmm. at a terminal. <laughs> People don't look at you like, what are you doing? Because they probably were going to do the same thing too. But I don't know that it's mainstream yet. I see signs where you go to a particular establishment, a particular restaurant. They actually will tell you, we prefer if you use Apple Pay. We prefer if you use uh, you know, Visa Pay or, you know, or Samsung Pay or what have you. But People aren't, you know, we haven't jumped the shark yet. Folks are still, primi- you know, primarily pulling out credit cards. So I don't know if I can, if I can get the, you know, it's mainstream in the sense that a lot of people are using it. No one is shocked by it, but it's not where I was thinking that this is how most people are going to pay for things. Um, I was really thinking that in, it, well, we were in the throes of the pandemic last year. I do not want to hand you a credit card. I don't want you to touch my credit card. I need you to spray it off before you hand it back to me if I have to give it to you as compared to me just holding my phone near something and, you know, me being able to make that payment. So I don't know if I get a whole point on that. I will say this, though, the mobile payment applications like, you know, PayPal was has always been there. But when you start to look at like Cash App, and in Venmo, which is, you know, they, they've been there, but their use and the, the, the way that people are using them, that has really, really increased. I mean, because I look at things like my parents are using Venmo and Cash App um, where they didn't know. So so that's what's yeah. different. It's not just millennials and, you know, in our generation or really in the tech. It's like my folks 
are using Cash App. They're like, you know, you know, hey, I just cashed out somebody something for their birthday or cash at me this. I see it at the store. I want to pick it up because I know you've been looking for it. That is is different. So mainstream in the sense that people are aware of it and they're not frightened by it like they used to be. And they don't get upset with you when you're standing in line and you're trying to do it because it's a poor terminal. Yeah. But is it mainstream in the sense that it is it is what we do most of the time? No, that we're, we're still not there. People still generally are going to pull cash out or pull a card out for the most part. I, I'll say, I was just, oh, go ahead, Tom. Good day. You go ahead first. Um, I, well, I was going to say that, uh, I just went through this this morning. I, I, you know, went to the market, had to pick up a couple things. They definitely, uh, accept Apple pay. I know that I've used Apple pay there before, but I mean, I have my wallet on me. So, you know, just do the card thing. That is, is like, it is. It just doesn't seem that much better unless I forgot my wallet at home, then that would be a different issue. But it's like it it doesn't seem to have crossed over into the point where people just say, well, of course, you just pay everything, you know, mobile payment on your phone. Why wouldn't you do that? We're not quite there yet, but I am with you on the non-grocery store type mobile payments, cash app, Venmo. I mean, I pay my rent on Venmo. I, you know, I, I all, all of the things have, have completely moved over to that, to the point where now when someone says, Hmm, how's that work? I'm like, really? Where you been? <laughs> I feel like in, and, and granted, I don't live on planet earth. I live in Los Angeles, but I feel like in the past couple of months, all of a sudden, everywhere I go, I'm like, oh, I can pay with my phone? Great. I don't have to pull my wallet out. I already got my phone out because I was taking a picture of your beignets right. or whatever, right? Like, that is happening more often than not to the point where I'm running into places where I'm, they're like, oh, this terminal isn't set up for that. Or, oh, we don't take that. I'm like, oh, yeah, no problem. I'll get, I am leading with my phone now. And that is very recent behavior. Like, that it which now the unusual situation for me where I can't use the phone, whether that makes it mainstream it's, or not, I don't know. But that's just that's just something I've known pers I've noticed personally. It's so regional, though. It's yeah, it's very very regional, and it develops a lot. Whether you're talking about a national chain or local stores, there are a lot of small mom and pop shops here in St. Louis. There are still not as bad as it was a year ago, but there are still a lot of places where you can't even use contactless payment or a chip. Now, I'd say it's down vastly from last year, but having driven across the country like a couple more times uh this year or another time this year it's still amazing how many places where you can't do contactless payment or they're still running you know this incredibly beat down credit card machine like i think we're closer but i think it varies so much by you know national chains most of them have it sorted smaller well, what, regional what's places weird are about that in that. la and this is an example of regionalism mm -hmm. it's the mom and pop places that have contactless here it's Don't the national it. chains like Ralph's that right. don't, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So weird. weird. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. and it, but you're right. It is totally, it's totally spotty. It's totally regional. So what percentage are we giving Rob on this one? I'd, I, give, him a, I'd give him a full point. I'd give him a point. Yeah. Give me the point. Yeah. Okay, I'll take it. Point, yeah. point. Yeah. Everybody's saying full, full point. point. Full point. point. Full two for point. three. <laughs> Actually, two and a half for three. Take Rob's that, Ted the, Williams. Rob's in the lead. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's move, go to Lamar. Uh, uh -oh. Lamar's first prediction, all movies will go same-day theater streaming for all major distributors in 2021. I, okay, so I, I probably shouldn't have said the word all um, <laughs> on, on that one. So, okay, so while it didn't <laughs> happen that way, many many movies in, uh, or companies did adopt this, right? It Like, even late in the year, there was what... Um, Warner Paramount particularly... Was, when, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like all yeah. their movies, right? Warner did all their movies. Paramount at the end of the year did like uh, some kid movies because the parents were iffy about their kids going to the theater. So there was a uh, Clifford uh, Adams Family two, I believe, went same day. Uh, the one that was surprised me, uh, Peacock made the decision for Halloween Kills. That was mm -hmm. uh, that was the same day release. So uh, there, there's you know Disney did a did a Disney uh, did a Black few, Widow did yeah yeah mm -hmm. did a Black Widow a few more than we thought they'd do so. It, it, there wasn't a full, hey, let's get together and and just and just make this happen. Uh, but I, I there was some progress made that I'm hoping the Pandora's box being. Oh, I, I'm hoping they don't stuff it all back in there. I, I I think 
I, I think there's it does seem like, like the effect has been reduced window, not day and day. Yeah, yeah I was right. going to say that. Yeah, there, and then there's, there's the Paramount. Four- <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. true. But like, yeah. but like you were dead on about uh, HBO in particular and Warner Brothers. In yeah. fact, they ruffled a lot of feathers and made a lot of people mad um, within the industry. But they st- are still doing it. The Matrix comes out day and day well, in a couple did of I weeks. Predict right. before, did I predict it before HBO made their announcement? Um, oh, I don't know. See, that gives you extra points if you did. I think what the show was on the 16th. They didn't, they didn't make that announcement until like near the end I of the year. I think we knew Wonder Woman was, but not all the movies, maybe. Right. So, so I did nail it for Warner. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah, That's all right. Maybe you get a point at uh, some yeah. point. <laughs> they also wanted to have. It, you know, I don't think the HBO story. Max. Oops, sorry, mm-hmm. Rob. I was just going to say, I don't think the story is completely written yet because, mm-hmm. you know, the numbers are not going in the right direction. You might see them, you know, decide to, okay, you know what? We're going to go back to release uh, at least same day. Um, if not, you know, completely online. Um, and definitely that window is going to be reduced because the, you, what you can see is that these companies are not making the same kind of money on movie premieres that they used to. They they just aren't. And I don't know that they are going to again for years. So, uh, like I said, I don't think the story is quite written yet. Yeah, Warner, uh, yeah. Warner decided to go back to theater leads on a 45-day window. 45 Universal day. announced a 45-day window, except for two movies, a Chris Nolan movie and a Jurassic. They'll get nine, they'll get longer ones. Uh, but as right as you are, Rob, the prediction was all movies in 2021. <laughs> so so I'm just, arrogant. I'm just pointing it out. Are we are we giving Lamar the point? Or half. It's got to get some, I, I right? I think you at least get a half a point. I mean, half. half a point feels we'll fair. Half? All right, yeah. all right. We'll give it half. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Lynn Lamar said that Disney would fold Hulu into its Disney Plus app as a hub and combine hmm. the subscribers to more than 100 million. Okay, so I demand half. <laughs> and this is why. Because oh, internationally, yeah, hear it. internationally, they 100% did this. They, they, they created Disney Star, which literally is Hulu, but international added ABC shows and and we just can't get it because Comcast that that whole Comcast Universal agreement does not expire for another 2 years or so and and so that's the problem here in the states but internationally that it it did worked they they did create those the, those hubs so well, um, are they still separate apps or is there just one app now for all right, one there app. was no Hulu internationally but it is that spiritually is right also also if you had said Disney folds ESPN Plus into Hulu as a hub and combines <laughs> yeah. you like I, I would have nailed it. They absolutely did that. Like they right. did what you were talking about. They just and, did it with two different brands in the US. Like Yeah, they did FX. I definitely also. think you get partial credit on this. Yeah. Cuz you were yeah. pointing towards that consolidation. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. if they could do it here they would. I, I believe the Bob dude would totally do it. It's just they're they're stuck with <laughs> Comcast right now. The Bob yeah. dude. I mean, I That's think they it. like having their. Remember in the eighties, they had Touchstone. So Disney was all the family stuff, and then Touchstone was the stuff was a little edgy. It's like who loses their Touchstone now? It's like they put all their edgy stuff yeah, there, at least in the point. states. I, and I get if that. You want, if you want rated R, you go there, and if you want, you know, Disney, fact, you go to Disney. What they might do is put Disney Plus as a hub in Hulu. Oh, that's, that's possible. That's, sure. that's, that's, that's to be that's, like <laughs> Disney Plus is the is the app for families, but if you want to have the bundle. Hulu might become the hub for that. That would be crazy. We'll save that for the predictions episode. All right, so we're giving we're giving you we're give, what are we giving Lamar here? Half, half, half point. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, final prediction from Lamar: Game streaming starts to become mainstream by the end of 2021. Okay. The key here is it. starts to the key yep. word. Well phrased. <laughs> and, 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 and a little Lamar. vague. <laughs> okay. But okay. So I, I will I will say Stadia fell off. Uh, at least from public notice. I'm not saying they're not still working. Uh, they're, they're working more of the developer side. But Xbox Cloud is uh, with Game Pass Ultimate not only has taken off, but now it's become one of those things where it's on your actual Xbox, and you may not, you may think, well, why would I want that? I could just download it. Well, I used it the other day. A friend was like, hey, you got this game called Golf for Friends. I'm like, I don't want to download it. So I didn't. I just pressed the the button to play it in the cloud instantly right, right there. And it's like, like it's kind of remind me of like instant demos. So yeah, you're right about that. In fact, I did a the other day. I was like, I want I want to try this game, but it's like 30 gig, and I'm like, do I really want to download 30 gig to try it? I don't even know if I'm going to like it on Game Pass. And now that you can just play with cloud on there, I got I don't know an hour into that game and and had to remind myself, oh right, I'm just cloud gaming this. And the cool thing is, any progress I made, it's all saved. 
So when I do download it, if I want the, the ultimate experience, it's all there still. I think you're there. right about the starting part. Mm -hmm. I think it's a full point, personally. Yeah. Full point. I would agree. All right. Because yeah, hey. this, it's, it started, and this is going to take off next it year. It really is. And into the future. Yeah. It, it's just going to be different names. Google tried, and I, I think they'll be a good back end. I really do. I don't, I don't think the state is going anywhere. It's just I, consumer, right? They weren't ready, ready for it. So you guys have demoed a couple games, but like literally every streaming service that has attempted to do this stuff off servers over the internet has crashed and burned. Well, no, Amazon Luna is still a, is still a thing. It, people, people play Amazon Luna? <laughs> there's, one, there's one or two. It's a good I, question. I, I, just, several. I, I just think with, with them owning Twitch, there has to be some Twitch people that are sponsored by Luna to, to like play it so technically sure one or two there's also there's a lot of you know experience or there's, there's a lot to say that what nvidia is doing with the geforce now has been very successful certainly in a niche market but but successful nonetheless oh, can you count that um, as cloud if you can count that as cloud you are absolutely right oh 100 you can count it because you fantastic. play all of it geforce now is all over cloud so so yeah. you can totally count that and i think that helps your argument but i also think it would take somebody like microsoft a big platform holder sony as well somebody to like make it get the traction it needs to not be an also ran like like Patrick's describing because he's right like in the past it's never worked out on live was garbage well not garbage but it just didn't work and others have tried this I think is the time it's like the tablets before iPads it's like the I hate to use Apple's example but you know it's the it's the iPods before iPods you eventually somebody goes no we're this is now this is the time and we're going to make it work and I think their their approach is the thing that's making it work by saying, here's cloud, here's download, here's uh, cross save, here's PC, like that part of it is what's probably going to make it stick this time, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right, we got two two full when you count all the points up uh, for Lamar. Just this right there, right there behind Rob. All right, <laughs> uh, my predictions, which I have a feeling I'm going to predict, will not change the standings at all. Uh, <laughs> My first prediction was we will see the first attack by self-learning malware that gets past AI-based defense systems like Defender. Just did a search for self-learning malware, and there's lots of great articles from December 2020 about self-learning malware. <laughs> so what I meant was in 2022. <laughs> oh, you just got the year wrong. I see. Wrong! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, you, I see where you're going with that. Well, thanks. Well, you're just a yeah. little ahead of the game. That's right. I'm ahead you know? of my time. Trailblazer. <laughs> I remember actually all year long, this one kept ringing in my head because of Rob's reaction uh, when I made the prediction last year on the show. Uh, Walmart, Amazon, and Alphabet become healthcare providers. And Rob was like, what are you doing to me? AI malware and these <laughs> folks become healthcare <laughs> providers? Uh, thankfully, while Walmart already had, when I made this prediction, kind of an association with, with emergency clinics, uh, we did not see any extension of that. And we definitely, if anything, saw Amazon move away from healthcare, kind of kind of move more into the, the enterprise provision of it, not farther into pharmaceuticals and that sort of thing. I thought they went deep into pharmacy. Deeper. I they, they they started to, and then they then they pulled back they pulled later back. in the year of like, oh, oh we're I not going to sell to end users. We're going to make a platform for pharmacies to be able to use our technology because they didn't want that antitrust attention. Yeah. I thought the Alphabet call was a good one just because it just seemed like something Alphabet would do, like something they would reach out and create, a, you know, for this, for a new division for Alphabet. It just felt right. But, but you, but you know why it's got, I know you're right. Cause the, there still is a problem for YouTubers and you, YouTube on their platform. They, they do not do a good job of saying, Hey, you're a contractor here. Here's some options for healthcare. Here's some options for insurance. They don't have to be an insurance provider, but they sure don't even give you options. And I think there was mm -hmm. there's an interesting space for all those thousands of creators to say, hey, we, now part of part of uh, Google, you know, Alphabet, we offer this, you know, and if you're if you're a creator over certain certain amount, you get a discount. Uh, into the into the plan. I don't know why they haven't done that uh, over the years. And I was thinking uh, Alphabet, not Google. I was thinking, oh, no, like no, I was Ver thinking Verily would do this, yeah. 
and then sure, there's a corporate synergy. Why, you know, why not just be like, oh, well, it's not, we're not, it's not even Google offering it. It's Verily, which is part of the same company. Uh, <laughs> thing is, that felt very realistic in December 2020. Uh, that a, a, an additional year of increasing scrutiny on the size and and tech backlash and and all of that just makes it feel like yeah no that wasn't going to happen knowing what we know now. Well, I, I think you hit it right on the head in talking about why Alpha or, or why Amazon pulled back because of potential antitrust, yep. and I think that uh, that Alphabet is thinking the same thing. Healthcare is so big, and these companies are so big. It's like okay, well, for now doing healthcare in addition to having all the other data and we have your health data now. Um, that seems like a way that you're going to get regulated on that really quickly. Yeah. Which is why I'm very upset that my next prediction also was wrong. Antitrust suits against Amazon and Apple by the United States. Oh, federally. We were so close. There. So them, close. You could yeah. just left off the United States or just said Europe and you would have been good. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I shouldn't have said U.S. Uh, I, I, I should have said investigations, not suits. Maybe I, I, because I, these suits are definitely coming. They just, I, you know, you should never overestimate the speed at which government works, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, there were also some some other things that happened that certainly diverted attention from antitrust for several months this year. Yeah, and the, the wheels, the wheels of government just don't turn that fast. That's Maybe by United States, you meant you meant um, Epic Games. <laughs> Maybe that's what you meant. Did I, I say you did it sound like I said United States, Roger? Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I think if you go back and listen, I was saying. Oh, big. Yeah, and by yeah. antitrust, you just meant, you know, uh, I don't know. I don't know what that suit's called. I meant a lawsuit. I there didn't say go. antitrust. I said lawsuit. Half yeah. point. <laughs> or congressional uh, hearings. Point. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, well, I am last. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but it uh, looks like Rob Dunwood, by a half point, did the best of all of us. Ooh, well done, Rob. Of yeah. course. It was Ron. He's so smart. <laughs> like, tell me about my prizes, silver, Tom. Man? Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> you win pride. Thank you. <laughs> I do, and I and I have a lot of pride in second place. Yes, I'm gonna go uh, Who ends up with the bronze? Then is that shared between Sarah and Scott? I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Looks I I would be fine sharing the podium with you, Scott. Oh, 100 percent. There's room here for Let's, bronze. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which, yeah, it's not like you have to pick a national anthem to play. Since no, it's fine. <laughs> second second place is the rough one because second place is almost winning. We we just well, really yeah, the wow. second place that person is like, oh, don't <laughs> gaslight me just because you didn't get to. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right. Well, that is our, our predictions results. Uh, one of my favorite traditions, of, you know, holding our feet to the fire. Like we may, we'll make the predictions. We'll do it again. Uh, but it's always good to check in and see like, all right, how, how good were we? Uh, thank you again to the folks uh, participating, uh, starting with Scott Johnson. Let folks know uh, where they can go to find you in the new year. Well, sure. Uh, turns out it's the exact same place they could find me last year. And so super convenient. Uh, if you're looking for anything I'm up to, frogpants.com is the place. There's shows, there's art, there's all sorts of stuff, and a few new things will uh, be trickling in there early in the year. So keep your eyes out. That's frogpants.com, and you can always ping me on Twitter. I'm at Scott Johnson. Patrick Norton, thank you as well. Where can they go? Still record at avxl.com, or still record avxl.com, or avxl if you want to search your favorite podcatcher with Rob Heron talking about home theater and personal audio. What about you, Rob Dunwood? Where's your 2022 location going to be? I am at Rob Dunwood on all the things. And since we met last year, I have started a brand new podcast called The Tech John, which you can reach over at thetechjohn.com, and you will hear tech discussed from a different perspective. Excellent. What about you, Lamar? Where'd yeah, you I'm, land next year? I am everywhere uh, at Lamar Wilson. I am really into uh, vertical uh, short from video. It's been a passion of mine that's working out really well. So um, from unboxings to more in 22, 2022. So stay tuned. Uh, you can find, but you can find me all at uh, Lamar.tv actually with two R's. Thank you. Well, thanks everybody for joining us on the show. It was fun. Uh, I didn't win, but it was 
Still really fun. Congrats to you, Rob. Uh, thanks to everybody who helps support our show every day. We cannot do it without you. So extra thanks to all of you. If you'd like to support our show at any level uh, and you haven't uh, done so already, dailytechnewsshow.com slash Patreon is where you can find out more about doing that. Reminder, we are live Monday through Friday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 2130 UTC. You can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. And we're back tomorrow with our predictions for 2022. Who will win? It's anyone's guess. Talk to you soon. No one should have to spend New Year's Eve alone. Every year, Ritual Misery presents the Diamond Club New Year's Eve Streamathon, 27 hours of raising money for sick kids through extralife.org. This year, Sarah and myself will be bringing in the new year in the UK. Join us on New Year's Eve at 2330-1530 Pacific for good year internet. Find all the details, including the full schedule, at ritualmisery.com slash streamathon. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>